Hello, Rohan. How are you doing? I'm doing good, sir. How are you doing today? Very good, very good. So last time we looked into the applications of tangent ratio, right? Yes, sir. Did you understand everything? Whatever yes, sir. Did. I was able to understand and look at the formulas mm -hmm. along with the angle of elevation and angle of depression. Very good. So we'll extend it to sine and cosine today. So that will cover all the applications in the right angle triangle for the primary trigonometric ratios. Okay. So let me share with you the screen. Then we'll go forward from there. Okay. So we're talking about sine and cosine ratios. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. I'm able to see it. Oh, that the kite which you see is a very good example, which we might take today if time permits. Um, so what we are going to discuss is, I hope you remember what is sine theta and what is cosine theta. Can you tell me what is sine yes, theta? Yes, sir. So sine theta would be opposite over adjacent and cosine hypotenuse. theta. Opposite over hypotenuse. Yeah. Uh, and cosine and is adjacent over hypotenuse. Correct. So that is how these two ratios are defined. And you, we have already done tan, which is opposite over adjacent. Well, you can use tan also in many applications. When we are doing some examples, we are primarily, I have selected so that we'll be applying sine and cosine, okay? So as you can see in the figures drawn here, when we talk about the sides, which is opposite and hypotenuse, it means sine ratio, correct? So sine ratio is opposite over hypotenuse. In the given triangle, if I'm looking from point C, which is that vertex, then the opposite side is AB, right? Do you see that? So yes, it's sir. AB upon the hypotenuse. In short, I will write this as sine as a ratio of O over H opposite over hypotenuse. Clear? When we talk about cosine, it is a ratio of adjacent to hypotenuse. If I look from this angle C, which is on the top, then adjacent side is CB and hypotenuse is the longest side in the right triangle. Perfect. Now, and we'll write the cosine ratio as adjacent over hypotenuse, capital A over H. Now, you'll also see that if I switch my angle from A to C, sine becomes cos and cos becomes sine, right? Yes, sir. So, a reverse of each other. So, sine C, sine C is AB over AC, right? Which is also yes. same as cos A, correct? Which is same as cos A, right? So in any right triangle, what we see, and cos A is 90 minus C, correct? So, so cos of 90 degrees minus C is equal to sine C, correct? Similarly, sine of 90 minus C, 90 degrees minus C is equal to cos C. Cos. So that is the complementary angle theorem, okay? So... So that is a very important relation which you've just seen here. It means that in a right angle triangle, when we are looking from 90 minus theta side, that means opposite becomes adjacent, adjacent becomes opposite, right? So that's why this formula works. Perfect? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, in a circle, if I take on a coordinate point, any point P, whose coordinates will be X and Y, and let us say, that in this case, the hypotenuse is R. But if I have a unit circle, let us say we take a unit circle where hypotenuse will be one, right? So I'm taking a unit circle. So in case of a unit circle, the what is cos theta? Cos theta will cos be? Cos theta would be um, adjacent over hypotenuse, so, so x case, over one. Which is x, correct? Which is x, correct? X yes, over sir. 1 is x. So you could write this as cos theta sine theta. Do you understand why it will be sine theta? So in a unit circle, any point on the circle will represent cos theta and sine theta value. You get the idea? Yes, sir. Perfect. So that is what uh, we're trying to say here in our summary of the formula that if I take a unit circle, that is to say, if the hypotenuse is one, right? This is small one written here, right? Let me enlarge it a bit. You see that? So if I have this hypotenuse as one and a point x, y, in that case, 
sine theta will be the y value and cos theta will be the x value, correct? Yes, sir. So any point could be written as cos theta sine theta if the hypotenuse is one. If it is not one, but if it is r, in that case, r times. Do you see that? Yeah. In that case, it will be r times cos theta and r times sine theta, right? Because it gets multiplied by r, correct? We have the idea. Yes, sir. So, so in general, if I have a coordinate point P, X, Y, in that case, this is also equivalent to P of, we have this point as R cos theta, R sin theta, where R is equal to square root of X square plus Y square. You get this. I, hypotenuse of any right angle triangle. You get the idea. So that is also, we could relate sine and cosine in a coordinate plane. Correct? Yes, sir. Very important things are given on this page. Let's look into some of them uh, in more details now. Now look into this particular right angle triangle. Let us say that this is one unit, correct? So let me just now enlarge this bit more, okay. So we're looking into this particular right angle triangle where OQ is the X value, right? And PQ is the Y value, right? Yes, sir. If you apply the Pythagorean theorem, then X square plus Y square is one square, correct? Yeah. So, and X is what? X is cos theta and oh, Y is sine theta. Is sine. So what we get? We get cos square theta plus Y sine square theta is one. So that is called trigonometric Pythagorean identity. You got the idea? Yes, sir. Now this equation, cos square theta plus sine square theta equals to one, can be rearranged and written in many different ways. Three of them shown here. You could take sine square theta to the other side. So you get cos square theta equals to one minus sine square theta. You can isolate cos square theta, right? Taking this on the right side. You get one minus sine square theta. And if I take cos on the other side, I get sine square theta equals to one minus cos square theta, correct? Yes, sir. So these are different identities, which are called Pythagorean trigonometric identities, which we can also apply in solving questions, okay? So we have learned actually two identities right now, complementary angle, and the Pythagorean identities for the trigonometric ratios. Do you see that part? Correct? Yes, sir. So there are many more things to learn, but before that, let's see some simple applications which are based on sine and cosine. Once again, right on the top of the page, what I'm writing is sine, cosine, and tangent ratios, their definition. So I'll, I'll take a few examples which will involve angle of inclination. Angle of inclination means what angle a thing is inclined at. Do you see that inclination angle, theta, which is shown here? Sure. That is the inclination. You can say it's kind of similar to the angle of elevation, right? But yeah. in many applications, if I put a ladder, for example, right, it is inclined to the wall. So we use the term inclination with the ladder. So it depends on the application. Sometimes we'll use the angle of uh, elevation sometimes inclination, but both are practically the same thing, okay? So here we have a very interesting case. There are two kites and you know, from point A, these two kites have an inclination angle of theta and alpha. How do you find the vertical distance between the two kites, the difference of their height? So we could solve these kinds of questions from the trigonometric ratios, right? We'll also have examples like this, where let us say there are two buildings, one on the left side, one on the right side. You are standing somewhere in between the road, okay? So if you know the angle of elevation of these two buildings, right, then you are in a position to find their height also. You get the Yes, answer. sir. So those are the applications which we'll look into, and then later, we are going to check what bearing angle is and then have a lot of questions based on bearing angles. Is it okay? 
Okay, sir. Sure. Perfect. So let's begin with example number one, which is the case of a ladder length. We need to find the length of the ladder. I'd like you to read what is written here. Can you read it? For non-self-supporting ladders, angle of inclination, the angle that an object makes with the ground, is very important for sa from safety and op optional use. At a construction site, recommended angle of inclination from 15 meters ladder is 68 degrees plus 4 degrees for safety reasons. Yes. Find the range of uh, height that can be reached uh, safely with the ladder. And B, is it safe to climb this ladder if the foot is five meters from the wall? Correct. So basically what we're trying to say is uh, there is a wall, right? So let us say this is the wall. And we have to work somewhere high above. And therefore, we are going to use the ladder, right? So let's say this is the ground. So we'll always assume that the ground is horizontal and level ground. That is our basic assumption. And the ladder is something inclined at an angle. Is it okay? So this is the angle of inclination, which we are talking about. Let this angle be theta. So the question says that the length of the ladder is 15 meters, correct? So 15 meters is the length of this particular ladder and it is inclined. It says that at construction site, Recommended angle of inclination for 15 meter ladder is 68 degrees plus minus four degrees. So we, we could go 68 degrees, right? Or plus or minus. That means you could change the angle in that, that is the tolerance. Is that, okay, that is a safe, safe thing, right? So it, 68 plus four is 72 degrees. So on the higher side, you could go to 72 degrees, right? And on the lower side, you could go to 64 degrees. You get the idea. Yes, sir. That is the tolerance. So that is first part. First part is find the range of height that will be reached safely with the ladder. So let us say uh, we have two different positions, one at 68 plus 4 and the other one at 68 minus 4. So let's say the other angle is kind of like, is that clear to you? 4 degrees. Okay, sir. So those are the two positions which you can reach, right? Let's call this height as H1 and the other height as H2. Is that clear to you? Okay, sir. So the range will be difference of these two heights. So how will you find the height when you know the length of the ladder and the angle of inclination? Tell me. So first, uh, I think I would do sine first, sir. So yes. sine of 15 um, meters. 72. So be sine 72 equals degrees. Oh, sine 72. of 72 degrees, 68 plus 4, right? For the height bigger. Okay. Opposite side is H2, right? H2 over the hypotenuse of 15, correct? 15. Yes, sir. So, so we can find the second height, which is H2, two is equal to 15, 15 times sine 72. Yeah. Can you calculate this? What do you get? I got 14.2658 meters, sir. Okay, two, six, five, we'll round it to three, okay? So we'll round it to three. Many times we have to give answers to three significant figures. So that becomes three significant figures and the units will be meters. So that is the maximum height. And to find H1, we'll use the angle of 68 minus four, right? So it'd be 15 times sine of 68 minus four Six, is 64, 64. Right? How much do you get that? I got 13.4819. So about 40, about 13.4. So 13.5, we round it. Okay. So we have rounded to 13.5 in this particular case. So what we have here is as you worked it out. That 68 plus 4 gives you 72 degrees, right? And 68 minus 4 gives you 64 degrees, correct? So we can find the two different heights for 68 plus 4 and minus 4. So when you calculate, you get these two, 
range is basically the difference between the two, right? So you can say range of height is from 13.5 meters to 14.3 meters. Is that clear to you? Yes, sir. So that is the range in which we can really operate safely at a construction site. It is very important that construction sites, you know, they, there may be many things to consider and we cannot have any injuries in these sites. Is that okay? So first yes, part sir. done, we have found the range using the sine theta. Now tell me, we have, is it safe to climb the ladder if the foot is five meters? So now second case, if the foot is five meters, right, then can we use this ladder at the construction site? How will you do this question? So, sir, by looking at this, we have 15 meters and we have five meters. Yeah. So I say co cos time would be better. Yes, yes. So it would just be cos of theta equals to five over 15 meters. Perfect. So you can find what theta is, right? So theta is cos inverse of five over 15. How much do you get? I'm just writing down the formula, sir. That sure, way sure, just, sure. But... Take your time. Yeah, yeah. Sir, I got somewhere like 70 and a half. 70.5 is correct. So, will, is it safe or not? Tell me. So, yes, it is safe, sir, because it reaches between uh, 64 degrees and 72 degrees. Perfect. So, that is how we could have questions based on this particular concept. You get, get the idea, right? Very important question from test point of view. Many times this, this type of question is asked in the test. Does it make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's move on to the next example. Can you please read example number two? Two trees 15 meters apart need support. A gu wire 11 meters long is fastened seven meters from the base of one tree. Another wire from this point is fastened to the other tree. Find the length of this wire if it is perpendicular to the first wire. Figure on the right illustrates the situation. Okay, so you understood. So there yes, are sir. two trees. So we are saying the two trees are, let's say, B, A, and A, B, right? So let me just erase this. So we have two trees here. One of them is right here, and the other one is on the other side, right? Now, a GUI wire 11 meter long is fastened seven meters from the base of one tree. So from the base of one tree, seven meters away, 11 meter wire is attached to the top of the tree, correct? Do you see how the diagram has been made? Yes, sir. Normally, this diagram will not be given to you. Now I have given the diagram so that I can under make you understand easily how we get there, right? But in the test, you may have to sketch the diagram yourself. Get the idea? Yes, sir. Very difficult. So understand, how do we sketch, right? So two trees, so make two trees at these two points as shown here, 15 meters apart means that's the distance 15 meters apart, correct? Okay. A GUI wire 11 meter long is fastened seven meter from the base of one tree. Select any one tree, seven meter from there and then connect it with the top. So that is what 11 meter wire is attached. You get the idea? Yeah. Now again, another wire from this point that means point C in our diagram, from this point is fastened to the other tree, other tree, right? Find okay. the length of this wire. So we have to find the length of this wire L. Find the length of this wire. If it is perpendicular to the first, so we have shown this is perpendicular to the first. So that is, do you see that portion? Yes, sir. So that is the question for you. How will you solve this question? Tell me, what is going to be your approach? We have now two right triangles to work with. Do you see that? So it's a special case where we have two right triangles to work with. 
If you are given such a situation, this method can be applied. So I've really classified things into different cases so that with the case, you know what strategy to adopt. You get the idea? Yes, sir. So for example, ladder strategy you have understood. We're using sign, we find how high it can go. And if you are given the distance from the wall, you have to use cosine, get your answer. You get the idea? Yes, sir. So that is the whole idea, right? So now tell me, what is going to be your strategy to find the length of the wire from C to E? Well, first, sir, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find like the length of C, D. That way I get a better understanding of the base length. So 15 so minus 78. is B, D. Yeah. My, so I'll do BC minus uh, BD, which would just be eight meters, sir. And then after that, I would solve triangle ABC okay. and I'll do cos of BC by AC, which would just be seven over 11. Cos theta is seven over 11, correct. So theta equals to cos inverse of seven over 11. Yeah, what do you get? I got 50.48, sir, like around it. So 50.48 is correct. So now if that theta is 50.48, now what will you do? Next step. Then what I would do, sir, is I would find out for angle C. So okay. that would just be 90 minus theta. So whatever I got, which was 50.48. Yeah. So. You say angle ECD, right? Yeah. So I got about 39.5, sir. Okay, that will work, right? 39.5 will work, right? So you got this angle, 39.5. Then what will you do? And then now I'll just solve for L, L. Which, yeah. which would just be... L is longer side, right? So yes, longer so side will be cos. 8 divided by cos of 39.5. Is that clear? Because cos yes, is sir. always less. You want a longer side. So you'll divide by this. You, you get the idea. Right? You will actually do like this. You say cos of 39.5 is equal to 8 over L, and then you cross multiply, right? Yes. L equals to 8 divided by cos of 39.5. Perfect. So what, what answer do you get? Cos of 39. I got 10.36, sir. So about 10.4 meters. That is correct. So 10.4 meters will be your answer. And that is how you solve two triangles, just as we have done just now. Is that clear to you? Yes, sir. Correct. So now you tell me, in a triangle, when should you use sine and when should you use cosine? Tell me. I, when using sine for a triangle, you should always look at the angle, sir which would give you a better explanation of whether along with the given information, which is for sine is a opposite over hypotenuse and cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. So that would be one way of knowing which um, trigonometric function do you need to use. Perfect. So to solve any triangle, which has six parameters, three angles and three sides, we should know three of them. Otherwise we cannot solve it, right? So if you are given a triangle, let us say this is our triangle. We know we are working with right triangle. So we know at least one parameter, which is 90 degrees, correct? Now it depends. We have an angle, let us say theta, right? So we have got two things. Now it depends what is what else is given and what you need to find. Let us say if I give you this and if I tell you to find that, I know we have to use cosine, correct? Yes, sir. And if you have to find this, in that case, we have to use sine. Simple as that. So what combination is given to you that will decide what we use, correct? Let's get to the last example, which is a very beautiful example. Can you please read this? This is a student activity. So you need to do oh. it on your own. Yes, tell me, read the Karen question. is flying a kite with an angle of elevation of theta. Hmm. A gust of wind makes the kite rise D meters higher and changes the angle of elevation by alpha. Mm. Show that the fixed length L of the string is given by the expression L equals to distance divided by sine of 
theta plus alpha minus sine of theta. <laughs> you get the idea. <laughs> yes, sir. So it's basically the difference of uh, the kites between the two angles of yes. elevation. So when you're flying a kite, there's a wind. So that wind makes the kite rise a bit, right? However, the length of the string is constant. You see that part? Therefore, yes, sir. In this diagram, as you can see, let me enlarge the diagram. Now, you can see that the length in two positions is L, exactly same, right? But because of the wind, the kite went slightly above, right? Angle also increased. So this is the distance D, which is a change in height of the kite horizontally. Is that okay? Vertically, right? And the angle increased from theta to theta plus alpha, the new height. Is that clear to you? Yes, now, sir. How will you solve this question? Tell me. So first, what I would do is I would solve uh, triangle ABP to okay. solve for theta. That way okay. I get the original height. And then afterwards, I'll solve for angle A, I mean, triangle ACQ. That is the additional height H2, right? Yeah. Okay. And their difference is D, correct? So let's do it. So sine theta, we will use sine because you, you, we know L is given to us, correct? So yes, cause it to hypotenuse, right? Hypotenuse. So we'll say sine of theta is basically equal to H1 over L, correct? So from yes. here, H1 is equals to L times sine theta. And H2 similarly will be L times sine of theta plus alpha, right? That's a bigger angle. Yes, sir. We are given H2 minus H1, right? So we know what is H2 minus H1. And that is distance D, right? Displacement D, vertical. So you'll do difference of these two. Correct? Yes. So when you do difference of these two, so you get H2 L sine theta plus alpha minus sine theta. Is that clear to you? L times, correct? You can take yes, L sir. common and you get sine theta plus alpha minus sine theta is equal to D, the distance given to us, correct? And now you can divide, you, you have to find L, right? So you'll do D divided by everything in the bracket, which is sine theta plus alpha minus sine theta. And that should be the length of the string, correct? Yes, sir. Do you see how simple it becomes once we understand things? It is a very interesting question. So we got the same expression that the length of the string is actually equals to the displacement, vertical displacement of the kite divided by the sine of final angle minus sine of initial angle. Do you see that? Yeah. How they are related? So that distance, because of the fixed length, we can actually relate all these things. Is that clear to you? Yes, sir. So that's a very beautiful question. We'll actually end here our lesson today. And next time, we'll talk about bearing angles, right? So we'll see what are bearing angles and how do we solve questions based on bearing angles. Is that clear to you? Yes, sir. Okay. So um, I'd like you to summarize today's learnings. Can you summarize what did you learn today? So overall, in today's learnings, I have learned about the different kinds of models in which sine and cosine can be used, seeing how they can be reversed depending on the function itself, mm -hmm. and also looking at expressions and solving them. Very good, very good. So try some more questions from your book and also from my YouTube channel and see if you have some challenges, let me know, okay? So we'll again begin with this chapter. And now look into uh, what is bearing angle, okay? So that'll be very interesting. Thanks. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you, sir. Have a great break. Thank you.